Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. And pack one, pick one. We've got the wizard pack apparently. We've got an Aban, which is pretty good. Adelis, which is quite good as well in the wizard deck. Time of Ice is a nice blue card. And in white we've got a Blessed Light as a great removal spell. And then I guess there's also Academy Journey Mage as another wizard that synergizes well with Naban and Adelis. So lots of great blue cards. If we take Adelis, we're committing to blue-red right away. But it is definitely the type of card that uh, could reward you for committing to wizards early. Yeah, Time of Ice is more flexible in the sense that you could be any aggressive blue deck and Time of Ice will be pretty decent for you. But on a raw power level, Adelis might be the better one. And it looks like people like uh, Adelis over Time of Ice. I can get behind it and then hope to wheel Journey Mage, although it's unlikely. Might wheel the Warlord's Fury, which is still fine in the Wizard deck. Alright, well, if you start with an Adelis, getting a second Adelis is probably pretty good. Giving up on an Eviscerate, an Academy Drake. So had we taken Time of Ice, now we would have probably taken Adelis. Had we taken the Blessed Light, we would be looking at Surveyor and even Sentry and Eviscerate. Probably Eviscerate. Alright, let's take Adelis. Alright, this is a bit of a disappointing pack. No great blue or red cards. Had we gone first pick Blessed Light, second pick Eviscerate, now we could have taken an Arvad or a Mesa Unicorn. But we're on the wizard track. So I guess we'll take an Arcanist over a Scholar. Already have two three drops now. Arcanist is still fine in the wizard deck, I guess. And follow it up with either a Fire Intervention or a Run Amok. The aggressive wizard deck, if it comes together, might actually prefer a Run Amok. But it's still difficult to pass up on a Fire Intervention. There's also Phoenix, which would be okay, but not great. And a Jousting Lance, which would also be okay, not great. Since we kind of have built-in pump spells and we want to be playing lots of cheap instants and sorceries, don't really need Jousting Lance necessarily. And it looks like we're still going with the Fire Intervention here. Still fine at 5 mana. But we do want to value cheap instants and sorceries as much as possible. And hope to pick up some late run amox. Alright, well, I think we take a Divination over the second Fire Intervention. It's uh, just a cheap enabler for Adelis. Draw some cards. Already have a Fire Intervention, don't want too many. But it's definitely close, like removal's always removal. But Divination's pretty nice in this type of deck. Alright, well, can now pick a Journey Mage over Syncopate, I think that makes sense. Want to be more proactive, don't want to sit back on counter spells all the time. Although we would probably play Syncopate if we got one later. And I like Journey Mage over second Arcanist. Let's take a Journey Mage. Alright, so here we might actually be interested in a Bloodstone Goblin. There's also Weight of Memory, which is castable if we have Arcanist in play to make it cheaper. Otherwise it's a little expensive. Do want to make sure we have enough 2-drops to be aggressive. Goblin not a wizard, sadly, but we might end up with a Sheevan Fire to enable Kicker. I think we'll go with the Goblin. And can follow it up with another Journey Mage. Seems good. Are getting a bit clogged up at 3 mana, so we do have to be careful that we don't take too many more. But there's no alternative here. Don't really want a Relic Runner. So Journey Mage it is. Our deck might be more interested in a Warlord's Fury than it is in a Snapper. Fury great combo with the 1-2 Lava Runner, which needs a lot of instants and sorceries to become a 2-2 haste. And that's going to be one of the key creatures that we need to pick up for the deck to get to curve low enough and to have enough wizards to turn on all the synergies. So I think we want a Fury over the Snapper here. Alright, this is not a wizard, it's a 5-drop, it's kinda clunky. I think we just want the goblin here be aggressive. 
and then hope to pick up a few more cheap combat tricks, a few more wizards, a few more flying creatures maybe. Sheevan fires would go a long way. Let's take a goblin. The deck is closer to like a, a mono red deck than it is to a blue control deck. That's how you have to picture it. Yeah, let's take a scholar, I guess. Yeah, might play befuddled, we'll see. Alright, so the first pack went pretty well. Double Adelis is a great start. Just need to make sure we have enough enablers, cheap instants and sorceries. And, well, that's a pretty bonkers pack. Mirari Conjecture is a great card, although not at its best in the wizard deck necessarily. Fight with Fire is a great card by itself, can end the game if you get to 9 mana, but also great at 3 mana. Tatiova, one of the best uncommons, if not the best uncommon in the entire set. Blink of an Eye, great card, would love it. Deep Freeze, okay removal if we're on the flying plan with Adelis. Sheevan Fire, excellent one drop for the deck. Lava Runner is also a nice addition, but we'll get it on the wheel. My first instinct here is Fight with Fire, although it is yet another 3 drop. Could be that we actually prefer the Shiva Fire in this deck, since we're not going to get to 9 mana very quickly. I don't think it's a conjecture, we're not trying to play a long grindy game. We're trying to kill the opponent quickly, keep our curve low, play 16 lands. So I think it's between Shiva Fire and uh, Fight with Fire here, the two red removal spells. And we might actually prefer the Shiva Fire in this deck, as crazy as it sounds, just because we want the mana efficiency, but man, Fight with Fire is great too. Yeah, it's definitely not very often that you'll take a Sheevan Fire over Fight with Fire, but this might be one of those instances. Plus it's also a kicker spell for Bloodstone Goblin, which you're more often gonna kick than a Fight with Fire. And it looks like Sheevan Fire edges out Fight with Fire. And then hope to wheel either the Blink or the, the one mana wizard, and well, not gonna pass up on an Embolus's Clutches here. Best uh, blue uncommon in the set if you discount Tatiova. Although it might even be better than Tatiova. Uh, Murfolk Trickster, nice cheap wizard for the deck, would also be excellent. But yeah, we're not giving up on a Clutches, so we might consider going back up to 17 lands and just play a slightly slower deck, but Clutches is just too, too good to pass up. Alright. Alright, well... The good cards keep coming. There's a Goblin Barrage, which would be excellent. We even have a few Goblins to sacrifice to deal for damage to the face. There's another Divination. Don't think we're too interested in Skizik, even though it would be okay in our deck. And Overseer's kind of weak by itself. Although it does fit the aggressive plan. So, Barrage or Divination, I think I'm leaning Barrage. Right, let's take a Barrage. Squee is pretty bad in our deck. This is probably the weakest archetype for Squee. Double red's also difficult on the mana. Don't really have many synergies with it. So we would definitely take a Journey Mage over a Squee. Question is, do we want the Journey Mage over a second Fire Intervention? Probably gonna wheel a Fervent Strike. My guess is it's just another Journey Mage. And then we can cut a Scholar for it if we're too high on 3 drops. Let's take uh, another Journey Mage here. And... Alright, Arcane Flight is actually pretty good in this archetype. Just as a cheap trick to get in those last points of damage while the opponent is struggling to answer all your wizards. Like it's quite a bit more than Overseer. And I don't think we want a Snapper. Want Clutches to be one of our few expensive cards. Alright, let's uh, grab an Arcane Flight. What's going on here? Why is there a Fight with Fire still in the pack? Run Amok would be great too, but I'm not passing up on a Fight with Fire. I won't look a, a gifted horse in the mouth. And Lava Runner seems good here. Didn't have any yet. Want to make sure to have those cheap wizards to turn on the Journey Mages. Would also like uh, Fury, would even play a Fervent Strike. But I think it's gotta be the Lava Runner first. And we can have another one. Pretty easy pick here, not a fan of Frenzied Rage. I much prefer Arcane Flight over it. Since Frenzied Rage doesn't guarantee that you get in the evasive damage while Arcane Flight usually does. One mana's cheaper than two mana. So let's take another Lava Runner. 
can have a third one or a deep freeze. Deep freeze is okay, but we already have quite a bit of removal with Shiva Fire, Fight with Fire, Barrage on Intervention, and Clutches. Deep freeze would also block our Journey Mages pretty well, which is not great. So I think I just prefer another Lava Runner here. And then we just need to make sure to pick up enough cheap cards like Warlord's Fury to turn them on reliably. All right. Might actually play the Fervent Strike. And time for pack three. What are we really looking for to fill out our deck? We're a bit light on two drops, so we'd love some uh, more cheap wizards. If we take a look at our creature curve real quick, putting spells aside, like this is our uh, creature curve right now. I've got triple lava runner, arcanist double goblin, and then a bunch of threes. So we want to make sure to pick up enough two drops, maybe more lava runners, and then enough cheap enablers for the lava runners and others. So what do we have here? We've got another intervention, got a lance, got a run amok. I think we actually like the run amok here, just as a cheap pump spell. Already have enough expensive removal spells. And yeah, run amok fits our deck perfectly. All right, those are some great cards too. Man, I see Journey Mage, Divination. I mean, I have to imagine it's just a Journey Mage, but it feels bad passing up on an Icy Manipulator. Journey Mage is always going to cost 4 mana if we have a Wizard in play. Has immediate impact. Icy's essentially 5 mana to activate, so it's a lot slower. This puts a creature in play to pressure them. This doesn't. Like, in a vacuum, Icy's just clearly the better card. But we have to think in terms of our deck. And I think Journey Mage fits our deck a lot better. We are a little bit light on creatures, so that also helps. And it's kind of like a creature and a removal spell all built into one card, which is hard to beat. All right. Another Tatiova. Could have ended up with two of them. Instead, we're looking at a second run amok and at an Academy Drake. They would both be decent. I think we prefer both over Syncopate since we don't really want to be too reactive to keep up in mana. We're going to be tapping out during our turn most of the time. I would definitely play a second run amok. Do we take it over the Drake is the question. We're pretty heavy on three drops. But it is an evasive creature which helps us close out games at times. So another close pick. So how many instants and sorceries do we have right now? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which is a decent amount. We pretty much already have a deck here. But we can still improve it. So it looks like chat prefers the Drake over the run amok. There's a chance we wield the run amok to be fair. And Drake could be an improvement over Tolerance Scholar, potentially, since we'll have plenty of wizards already. So, I don't hate the Drake. So do we want Journey Mage number 4? Or Arcanist number 2? We were pretty low on 2 drops, so having another one would be nice. Doesn't help with the clutches, but it helps with Intervention, Barrage, Fight with Fire, Divination, Run Amok. And we do have to keep our curve in mind. So Arcanist makes sense here even though Journey Mage is a, a better card. Pretty happy with another Lava Runner. I think we still happily play a fourth. And all right, we got a Run Amok anyway. Don't think we're playing Snapper, already have a, an Unwind. Although I don't think we're playing that one either. So Run Amok it is. And this one's a blank, that's okay. Got plenty of playables already. Guess we'll take the uncommon for the vault. Alright, Lava Runner number 5. Don't know if we'll play the fifth copy, but I'll take it for now. Alright, Jousting Lance versus Cyclops. Definitely a decision. There's a good chance we don't play either, but All right, let's take a Lance. Alright. So our deck is pretty stacked. It's going to be hard to make some cuts. First question we have to ask ourselves is do we play 16 or 17 lands? Or only curve toppers are Journey Mage, which is 4 mana, Intervention, which can be 4 mana if we have Arcanist, 
and then one clutches at six, which is fine if it's stuck in our hand for a while, since if we do get to six, it probably wins us the game. Um, so I'm thinking 16. Don't think we want to go as low as 15. Yeah, if we were like a mono red deck, maybe you can get away with 15. But since we were playing two colors, I don't think we can get away with uh, fewer. At one mana, we've got five lava runners, which is quite a bit. Want to make sure to have enough cheap instants and sorceries for those. Our three drops are pretty stacked. So this is how our curve looks like. I think we're playing both run amox. Question is, do we want a lance? Do we want scholar? Do we want drake? Do we want the fervent strike? Do we want all the goblins and arcanists? So let me put some cards on the cutting block here so we can decide. So scholar's cuttable, drake's cuttable. One arcanist could be cuttable. Goblin could be cuttable, lance could be cuttable. A lava runner could be cuttable. And a fervent strike is potentially cuttable. Uh, could even consider cutting multiple lava runners, but I don't think we want to go below four. Four seems good. And of course, the more lava runners we have, the more important cards like Fervent Strike become. But we already have Double Run Amok, Sheevan Fire, Fury, Divination, Fight with Fire, Barrage, Intervention. So we have a decent amount of enablers for the lava runners. Yeah, so Land seems pretty cuttable. Uh, Scholar seems cuttable. So now we still need to make two cuts. So I think we'll go down to four Lava Runners. And then we need to make one more cut out of these remaining cards. Kind of like the Fervent Strike, just to have enough enablers for Lava Runner. Don't want to cut too many two drops, but maybe one's fine. Cut a Goblin. Yeah, that's reasonable. All right, sure. So in turn one, we're going to play lots of Lava Runners. Might cycle a Fury every now and then. Turn two. We've got Arcanist and Goblin, or we could run a mock on one of our Lava Runners. We could Arcane Flight one of the Lava Runners, who knows? Could she even fire something? Turn 3, we're playing Journey Mage, hopefully with the Wizard in play. Or we're playing Atlas and attacking. Or we're playing a Drake or a Divination. And then turn 4 forward, we can start double spelling pretty easily. Oh, we only have 16 lands, or 15 lands. Yeah, we do want to make sure to play 16, I think. 10-6 or 9-7. So we still need to make one more cut. 6 is pretty low. Might make it difficult to cast Arcanist and Adelis on curve. So maybe 9-7 is the way to go. And hope we don't have too many double island openers, since then we might be limited how many red spells we can cast in the same turn. Yeah, I think we can cut a 3-drop probably, since we have so many. And I think we just want to cut the Drake at that point, make sure we have the maximum amount of synergy with all our wizards. Triple Journey Mage, double Atlas is a pretty good incentive to play lots of wizards and a Journey Mage too. So let's cut a Drake. So now the question is 10-6 or 9-7. Yeah, our uh, Goblin Barrage got a little bit weaker now that we cut one of the Goblins. But it's still a decent spell for mana for damage, is quite good. Plus we've got double Arcanist to help us uh, ramp it out as well. I think Atlas is just so powerful that we want to maximize the chance of being able to play her on time. So I think I'll lean island. But we might run into some situations where we're going to be stuck with some lava runners in hand that we can't cast. All right, let's uh, try this. Picture is going to be Atlas. All right. And their opening hand looks good. Double Islands, still gonna play out fine, I think. Playing a Goblin on two, and then we have to figure out what to do next. That's fine. Yeah, we've got a bit of late game as well. Got our early pressure, got some removal to back it up. Sergeant's beatable. Ooh, and a Fervent Strike. So here we see not having double reds could potentially come back to bite us. Could just fight with fire the Sergeant, get in for three. Could also Arcane Flight a Lava Runner, attack with both. And then Fervent Strike, if they block the Goblin, that's also reasonable. It's a bit weaker in the face of removal on Lava Runner next turn. So, a few options for sure. 
I think I'm gonna just fight the sergeants with fight with fire here and keep arcane flight in case they have a removal spell on four like a, an eviscerate so we don't go all in with the arcane flight yet and this is in the hopes that uh, Shivan fire can still deal with one of the next creatures they play could potentially kick it and enable goblin definitely an interesting turn right. gonna be a kicked confessor So I think the only decision here is whether we arcane flight one of our creatures before we attack or if we keep it in hand. It does get in one more damage, but it's a bit weaker in the face of removal. Opponent gets to five mana next turn, which is where they have access to Blessed Light. I think we keep it, but one damage could end up mattering. So I'm just going to attack with both. One damage could also turn into two damage if we draw land and want to play Kick Chief and Fire next turn. So... Definitely an interesting uh, decision. And then we're probably gonna use Arcane Flight on the Goblin, so we keep a Wizard in play for all the three drop Wizards we have. Arvad's annoying, but if we draw a land we're okay. That also works. So had we played Arcane Flight, we could have potentially gotten in two more damage already. And this is why Journey Mage is potentially better than Icy in this deck. Replace Arvad. And now an Adalys. Alright. Does not trigger on Arcane Flight, does trigger on Sheevan Fire. So now I think we Arcane Flight on the Journey Mage. And play Adalys. Seems fine. And we're just one land away from uh, Kick Chieven Fire, which also makes Goblin game menace. Alright, so just need to dodge some efficient removal here. So we had a very good turn there, making two evasive threats. And yeah, we might not even get to cast the clutches, but that's okay. We had it just in case. And Sheevan Fire next turn with Adelaide in play also pumps the team. Right, opponent has an IC, that's fine. So land wins us a game, if they attack they're dead. Right, just an Arcanist, so now what? We move to combat, our opponent taps down Journey Mage. If we attack with everyone, opponent blocks, let's say, the Lava Runner. We Sheev and Fire, pump the team, get in for 5, opponent gains 3, so don't think that's great. Since I assume our opponent's gonna block the Lava Runner and not the Goblin here. Knowing about Adalus, if they block Goblin, then we would have six. And they would gain three, so they still wouldn't die. Oh, wait, yeah, we can actually sheave and fire our own creature. Missed that interaction. But if they block the Lava Runner, still we can't kill it bec because it will get plus one from Adalus. So it actually doesn't work. Because we cast a sheave and fire, Lava Runner gets plus one plus one. Doesn't I do the sheave and fire? That would be a disaster. So let's just attack uh, with Adalus. But yeah, definitely an interesting line of play. Killing your own creature in the face of lifeling creatures is definitely something that uh, can come up. I remember a, a puzzle back in the days of Duels of the Planeswalkers where you had to kill your own creature that got blocked by a Baneslayer Angel to get lethal in. Right, opponent gets in for five, but our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, I mean, next turn we were going to be able to play Kick Chief and Fire as well, thanks to the Arcanist, so. Alright, that was an interesting showing of the wizard deck. I think we're still happy with all the cards we have in it, so we'll run it back. Alright, this one's... Kind of a sketchy one, we are on the draw, so we do get a decent chance of drawing a mountain, in which case this hand would be quite good. Turn 2, Goblin, turn 3, Journey Mage, turn 4, Journey Mage. On the play, I think I would mulligan. On the draw, any land lets us play Divination as well as a fail case. I think we keep, we do have uh, 9 mountains in the deck, 
So we're not favorites to draw one by turn two, but pretty close to. And I think the sand can probably still play a longer game, even if we don't curve out perfectly. Alright, so land means we can divination on three at the very least. Hoping for a mountain. Perfect. Alright. Opponent on blue-white. And actually we don't mind seeing a triumph here, since Journey Mage can bounce the creature before they get in the life link hit. So your opponent going all in on one creature gets punished by bounce spells, which is why I do like my Blink of an Eye and my Journey Mages. And I'm totally fine if they want to block the Goblin. We're going to play the Journey Mage so we can get down Academy Journey Mage next turn. So let's send. Opponent considering blocking here to grow the Disciple. Alright. So, don't want to lose our Journey Mage here, otherwise Academy Journey Mage is going to cost 5. And we do want to make sure to bounce our Disciple next turn. Archaeologists. Alright. Still going to go for the Journey Mage, bouncing Disciple here. They're going to get a life-linking flying archaeologist for a turn, but then we can deal with it. Seems fine. So, I think we're attacking still. If they want to jump with the Construct, that's fine by me. Alright, so our opponent gets a nice little lifelink hit here, but we are ahead on board, and we've got some reasonable tools in hand. Alright, mountain was good. So now all of a sudden we've got a lot of options. Between the Divination and the Fury we've got two things that draw cards. Giving our stuff first strike does work out pretty well, since then they can double block our 3 twos as well. Arcane Fly doesn't seem necessary this turn, so we probably want to lead with Fury. In case we draw, let's say, an Adalys, we can still play Adalys and attack. And there we go. So now we can play Adalys. Do we Arcane Flight? It is tempting to Arcane Flight here. And what are we arcane flighting? I guess one of the three twos. So might as well be the journey mage. In case they bounce it, we get to bounce something else. Probably more important than two damage. And then next turn we get to go off with divination and fervent strike. Alright, opponent down to 12. Gets a counter on Archaeologist. But we're at 10, so... We'll see if they can uh, do some damage here. Oof, on Sarah's Wings, it's unfortunate. Yeah, that's definitely the type of card that can get them back into it. Yeah, we've lost a fair share of games to Onsara's Wing, sadly. Had to use our Journey Mage earlier because of the Triumph. Don't have any bounce spells left. So let's Divination, see what we draw. Some lands. Can we threaten lethal, force them to block Journey Mage with Archaeologist so we can Fervent Strike and kill the Archaeologist still? They're probably going to block Adalys, which is only going to be a 5-5, five five or a 5-power creature. Opponent's at 16, they've got Disciple that can jump in front. And we need a flyer back to survive the Archaeologist. Yeah, this is a close one. 
Yeah, that also works. Well, that's just rude. Even gets a plus one, plus one counter, so... Yeah, if we further strike now, it's gonna be six power, but then they still have a seven power dude. Yeah, that's the perfect storm of cards we didn't want to face. On Sarah's wings into Imbolas' clutches. We'll definitely swing a, a game back in your favor. So we're chomping a, an archaeologist here. And what are we hoping to top deck? Our own Imbolus's clutches? That's unfortunate. Let's uh, hope for our own Bolus's clutches here. Not quite. All right. It did take some pretty good cards to beat us, though. All right, let's try again. All right, this hand's lacking some early creatures, but it does have Adelis, so I think we keep. Turn one Confessor. Opponent on an aggressive. Black deck, we might see Chain or Stormens. Black Red. Alright, this type of deck. Man. People definitely like drafting their uh, auras, don't they? Let's just uh, kill it now. Don't want to run into a random plus one plus one. Alright. So this is why playing Auras does have its drawbacks, even though you might steal a win every now and then. They have their own Shivan Fire. Alright. Well, we do need to draw a creature here. I mean, it's just a 2-4, so it doesn't really do much here. Killing the Skin Witch with Intervention doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Could attack and run amok. It seems kind of mediocre. We're definitely flooding out a bit. But our opponent scoops it up. Works for me. Alright, well, that was kind of a weird game. We weren't necessarily winning that game, since our hand was actually pretty bad under the circumstances, but... Not gonna question it. Yeah, Arcane Flight is kind of the exception for uh, in terms of auras, I think. Arcane Flight and On Sarah's Wings are uh, auras I don't mind playing. Dub can sometimes be decent in some decks too, but just play them knowing that there's a risk involved. Every now and then there's a format where there's not enough removal and auras are actually good. But Dominaria is pretty full of removal spells. Every color except for green has a lot of quality removal spells that's common. So the aura strategy is not often going to work out. In blue you have Blink, Journey Mage and Deep Freeze that punish auras. In red you have Shivan Fire. You've got your uh, Fire Intervention at common. In white you've got Blessed Light and Ginster Approach at common. In black you've got Fish's Offering and Eviscerate at common. So plenty of removal to go around. I 
Arcanist is gonna play defense. Next turn we can go Lava Runner into Divination. Alright, Rados, not bad. They can kind of attack for free just to make some mana. This seems fine. Alright, Ancient Animus killing Adalus, that's unfortunate. Definitely needed our Adalus to survive there. And they even got a put a plus one plus one counter on their legendary creature. Not a thing you see happen very often. So yeah, we might get crushed this game. Alright, let's uh Let's just divination and double lava runner, I guess. If we can hit our lands until clutches, that's a way to come back into the game. Yeah, early Rados definitely quite good since you can make use of the extra mana much more than in the late game. See so if they have any instants. We get crushed if we double block the Lava Runner, sort of. But Lava Runner is actually not too important in our game plan of stealing Rada with clutches. So I think we still do this. Since if we single block, single block, and they pump Lava Runner, we still lose a Lava Runner for free. At least now we make them have it. Sure. Don't have high confidence here, but... Yep. That was gonna get us no matter what. Alright, so we need to survive one more turn here somehow. And then have a land for clutches. And I mean, if we steal Lorada, then we do have the largest creature on the board. Even though there's a chance we could triple block Rada and kill her. We don't really want to do that when we're holding a clutches. Opponent sends everyone. I think these are our blocks. Hope they don't have yet another pump spell. Take four. And then hope to draw land next turn. Yeah. I mean, they probably have another trick, otherwise they probably wouldn't have attacked with everyone, but... At least we still get one decent block out of the two we made. And there's a lance, alright. Let's see if we can make a comeback here. Opponent is almost on empty, but so are we. Alright, opponent says go, she even fires great. So we might have turned the corner here, and might as well start attacking. So our opponent had a very good start, but... All good starts come to an end, I guess. And now they're drawing the lands that they uh, didn't have earlier. Yeah, that's a bummer. They're gonna steal Rada, we're gonna have to chum block her. So we're technically not dead on board. But then we can kill the Overseer. So this Rada's going back and forth. I mean, technically we could block the scouts, go to one. But if we go to one, then we can't attack with Rada anymore, since then they have lethal if they attack with both creatures. If we chum block, we take one down to four, and then we're racing four damage to two damage, so... Pwn goes to eight, we go to two. Pwn goes to four, we're dead. So it's pretty close here, what to do. Having a wizard in play can be relevant if we draw more copies of... Uh, Journey Mage, which we have two more in the deck. Also relevant with Adalus. 
think my first instinct is just blocking here, preserving the Arcanist. And then we might just not attack with Rada. Yep. Alright. So if they draw a creature and we brick for a turn, we're dead. Land doesn't change much. Rada still blocks pretty well. Alright, uh, how much mana do we have? Oh, I guess we can attack and add mana as well. I guess it works. Attack, make one red. Arcanus doesn't have to attack necessarily. So I shouldn't have showed him the land yet, but oh well. Man, Harada's ability coming in handy over here. Hehehehe. <laughs> It's gonna be 10 to your face. Thank you very much. Well, did not think we were gonna win this game. But here we are. And that's why Imbolas' Clutches is a pretty clutch card. Yeah, Rada got to see both sides of the battlefield, and I think she prefers our side. Don't think we can keep a one-lander. Let's go to six. Yep, that's definitely the card we want to keep on top. Yeah, that's kind of a roadblock. That's not a bad draw. All right. So if we could choose our next top deck, what would it be? Um, hard to say. Maybe a Shivan Fire. Black Blade Reforged. I guess Goblin Barrage also works. Still just playing Adelis here, tanking for two in the air. Yeah, I mean, it's only fair. We lost the game to Clutches earlier, and now we stole a game with it. Alright, let's uh, start going off here. Not bad. So we could Barrage, but then we have to tap the Arcanist. I think we just attack with everyone. Keep the Arcane Flight for next turn. We can go Barrage plus Arcane Flight in the same turn. What are the implications of a fungal infection? I think we still attack. Like either way they get to kill one of our creatures if they have fungal infection here. All right, they don't have it. Opponent on mono black. And a wall, sure. And that's a Sheevan Fire. So are they dead now? Sheevan Fire, Barrage using Arcanists, Arcane Flight, a Lava Runner. That should work for five, six mana, yeah. And then we're pumping with Atlas twice. This is going to get buffed as well. So it's going to be two power, two power, then both pumped twice. So four, eight. Arcane Flight is nine. So I guess not quite. I mean, putting them to two and having two lethal threats still seems pretty good. Arcane Flight, the Lava Runner. Nah, I think we just push damage here. Put them to two, have two lethal threats, and they have to come up with two removal spells. That seems reasonable to me. Alright. Sweet. So, blue-red wizards. Definitely showing off 
how good it can be, especially when you've got those adults draws. We were even on a, a mulligan that game, but it didn't really look like we did. And Arcane Flight also acting as a nice finisher. Had some games where we could have used it a lot more aggressively. We've been keeping it in hand as kind of a surprise. Make my creatures un unblockable, which is the mode I like the most. But yeah, every now and then when your opponent doesn't have any removal spells in hand, using Arcane Flight as soon as possible could potentially deal a bit more damage. But of course has a bit of risk involved. This hand seems pretty stacked. Don't love having clutches in our opening hand, but yeah, never gonna mulligan the sand. No. Right. That's a good one too. Alright, let's uh, just I'll list it up. Arcanist, so we can go Arcanist, kill Disciple. Seems good. And if we draw land, we journey mage. If we don't, we can potentially fight with fire. Alright, Corsair's decent. Opponent had a totally reasonable draw, but we have a pretty unreasonable draw. So if we fight with Fire the Corsair, we can attack with everyone. I think I like that more than the Journey Mage here. Even though Journey Mage sets up a bigger attack on the following turn. If we Journey Mage Corsair, they replay Corsair, we fight with Fire the Corsair, and I guess then they're pretty much dead. So maybe that's actually fine since that locks them in the same play pattern. If they have a Blessed Light, we would miss out on a bit of Adalus damage is the downside. Definitely a, a close call. I think we want to get in our Adalus damage while we can. So I'm going to fight with Fire the Corsair. Since at 5 mana in red and white there's two common removal spells. Sweet. This is why Atlas is a pretty busted card, but of course having some great removal spells always helps. So we're 5 and 1. Alright, this hand seems good. Double Lava Runner start, Divination on 3 to refuel, hopefully find Atlas more tricks. Oh yeah. So now what? If your opponent has Vicious Offering, playing Journey Mage here is nice. Playing Atlas means we get to Divination next turn. Has to be Atlas. Alright, looks like they have a Vicious Offering sadly. Alright. I think we're still gonna be fine. Oof. Alright, never mind. Bone has got a very good draw as well. Turn one memorial, turn two vicious offering, turn three slimefoot. Can definitely beat us. So how likely are they to block our lava runners here? We haven't shown them any instance of sorceries yet, so they probably still block. Alright, my guess is we 
journey mage first and then next turn we can divination hope for a cheap trick like a run amok or fervent strike cheap removal is definitely the way to beat the wizard deck this is why your shivan fires and your vicious offerings are better than your more expensive ones Yeah, Arcane Flight could help. Clutches could help. They did miss a land drop, so their hand is all action. Don't think we want to attack with the Journey Mage quite yet. Give ourselves a chance to top deck an island for clutches. Alright, we're going to main phase make a token. I guess that also works. So we can Barrage and Arcane Flights. It's actually pretty good here. And we'll Arcane Flight to Journey Mage. Opponent can kill one Lava Runner. They take eight. They're just gonna Chum Block. All right, so what's their plan? Do they have a bunch of removal? What sweeper is there? I guess that makes sense. All right, we're just gonna keep attacking here. Eventually maybe steal the demon token. Don't hate our chances. Opponents down to three. So they need an answer for the journey mage right now. And yeah, that does it. So opponent had a very good start, but they couldn't keep it up. Missed a few land drops and we drew pretty well. All right, nice. So blue red wizards, six and one. Let's uh, keep it going here. And this hand seems okay. Also showing why Gitu Lava Runner is an important part of the wizard deck. So what are we hoping to draw? Adalys, always high up on our list. Another cheap instant or sorcery would be appreciated. Maybe the Arcanist as a 2-drop would be okay too. Looks like our opponent has a Fungal Infection. So we'll attack, keep up Fervent Strike if they Infection us. All right, well, we've got an okay start, but if they play a decent blocker here, we could be in trouble. It's not a decent blocker. Divination's great. All right. Second infection could be effective, but they don't have it. Drawing all these islands is not great for the future, but for right now, we're doing pretty well on board. <laughs> and our opponent just packs it in. Well, we've had some pretty early concessions this uh, this run. I guess some people have battled against the Blue Red Wizard deck before and uh, fallen victim to it. All right, well, that was probably the fastest seven win run I've had so far. Let's crack some packs. Yep, on Sarah's wings. The one card that could beat us. And another Ariel and a Clutches. That was also a pretty important card in our deck. So that's gonna be it for me today. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.